I will say it every single time I do one of these videos. Ubuntu Linux is built around the LTS. Anything that is not an LTS is a testing ground for the LTS. Now, this doesn't mean the intention is to release something that is known to be broken, that is going to cause disruptions, that no one is going to want to use. But sometimes things are going to break, and there is less initial care that something is broken than would be the case in an LTS. Because when something is broken in the LTS, that's going to be something people use for a very, very long time. When something's broken in a release like 25.10, that's only going to matter for about six or so months. And last time I did a video on Ubuntu, I said there was a problem, but it wasn't related to UUtils. And that problem is still not related to UUtils. However, Turns out that there actually was a UUtils problem. It's just that nobody realized the extent of the problem yet. They knew about the issue, but not what it affected. Reported on October 16th, 2025, Ubuntu 25.10 questing. Rust call utils date dash r passing in a file name returns a wrong date. So what this is supposed to do is tell you the modification time of the file, the last time that file was modified. Now, in most situations, this isn't really that big of a deal. Yes, it's annoying if you're trying to use the functionality, and yes, it would be better to see an error than the wrong number, but in most cases, it's going to break very little things, like the sorting of a file manager. So you sort by modification date, and it doesn't sort it correctly. Is that a problem? Yes, is it the end of the world? In most cases, probably not, because if you really care about things being sorted correctly, you're probably not just relying on modification dates. Impact. Date-R reports the current date instead of dates specified by a reference file. So right now it is the 28th of October 2025 at 2.35pm, so instead of reporting the actual date the file was modified, it would just say it was modified right now, what do you mean it wasn't modified right now? I don't know anything else. And every single file says it was modified right now. Obviously, not correct, and this is probably the worst thing that can happen. This makes files look too new, causing, for example, backup scripts to not run their backups because they think their backups are current and possible other mayhem. This can be a legitimate problem, but again, it's probably only a major deal in the case of doing like, local backups on the same system. If you're sending your files to a separate server that is not running Ubuntu, it would be doing those checks for you and wouldn't be that big of a deal. Again, it's a problem, but at least at this stage, wasn't the end of the world. Where problems could occur, the change is straightforward and only affects the code using dash R adding the specified file as a date source and using that if specified. This uses an enum member that is newly added and a match statement. Match statements are exhaustive, so the compiler effectively guarantees us that this only affects date-r and no other code parts. So nothing else in date was being affected. It was literally just this one option. Now here's the fun part. The problem had technically already been dealt with. So when the problem was reported, this had already been fixed upstream on September 13th. They already knew about the problem. They'd already dealt with it. The problem, though, is let's go to Core Utils, let's go to the releases, and the latest release was on three days ago. That is 0.3.0. This is going to have the fix. The prior release before that is 0.2.2 on September 10th. This is what Ubuntu was shipping because this was the latest tagged version. And I don't really know why there was such a big gap between releases because the prior version was just two weeks earlier. So not entirely sure how this situation even happened in the first place. But the solution in a situation like this is just temporarily pull in the patch. And then when that new version is out, then the problem should be dealt with. But initially it wasn't really being considered that big of an issue. It's something we should deal with, but it's not like a crazy critical issue. This is fixed upstream in this commit right here, and we can pull this in at a later point in time. 
for the time being, we'll focus on fixing critical issues that could introduce unsafety further down the chain, such as the short write in this bug over here. I do not anticipate there are a lot of shell monitoring scripts, particularly in 25.10, as this is not an LTS release. For the upcoming LTS release, this is of course a higher priority item, given more enterprise use cases. Again, like I've always been saying, the LTS is the main focus, because that is what the enterprise users actually care about. Okay, I understand and agree with the decision about the priority of this problem. In our case, I thought it was important because it's a silent problem. I mean that as it doesn't fail, no errors, just gives incorrect but usable info. Problems are unexpected at further chain. So it's still giving you a date, but it's not giving you the modification date, it's just giving you the current date. So any tools that you use in your chain, anything that interacts with date-r, isn't going to notice anything is wrong. It's going to behave perfectly normally. It's just nothing that involves having something be older or newer is going to function, but it doesn't error out. Nothing looks like it's going wrong. For instance, we have a monitor for a couple of files we want to know if they'll change during the day, and we started receiving warnings about these files being updated today. Now, if they were updated today, that's fine, but all of the files that were being monitored all said they were updated today, regardless of what was done. The real problem we faced was silent. Our daily backup procedure is only done when our previous backup was old enough. Daily, weekly, etc. So as the previous backups are being identified as done today, there was no backup at all, and no errors. Without the previous problem detected, we wouldn't detect the backup problem unless we need a backup too late. Thank you very much and best regards. Yes, I did not consider that too new is a failure case for is this outdated, which may be a problem, so I bumped it to high, so going from medium up to high. The fix is easy as well, we should be able to land this quickly like the other patch we did for DD, because the work had literally already been done. Now whilst work for this was going on, whilst things were being tested, whilst things were just making their way through the proposed repo, someone actually noticed the other thing that this was breaking, the much more relevant issue that this was causing, right here. This bug breaks unattended upgrades in 25.10, apt.systemd.daily checks if the modification date of the timestamp file var lib apt periodic update dash stamp is older than the current date minus an interval. The difference is always seen as zero because it's always taking the current time, and unattended upgrades never run. So it turns out there actually was a very important script on Ubuntu, a very important file on Ubuntu, where making sure the modification date was set correctly was actually really, really important. So this went from being marked as a high issue to a critical issue and public to public security. Because this is now a security related issue, this is a situation where users who are only running unattended upgrades are not having a system that is getting updated. That is a big deal. And because this is technically its own separate issue, even though it's being caused by this problem, as the author said here, they have now gone and created this one. Unattended upgrades broken in 25.10 due to Rust Core Util's date bug. And it did get marked as a duplicate, but for the sake of documentation, for the sake of understanding what problems this is actually causing, I think it does make sense to have its own separate thing. Now the important question is if this is breaking upgrades, how would one install the patch that fixes upgrades so they can do further upgrades? So this is only breaking unattended upgrades, so automatic upgrades where you don't have to interact with the system. If you're doing a manual update through apt update, apt upgrade, this was never affected, your package versions aren't checking modification dates to know if the package you're downloading is allowed to be installed, that would break very very quickly, basically no sensible package manager is doing so. One thing I don't understand about this entire situation is how don't you have a test file for ensuring that unattended upgrades are working? Because this is just unattended upgrades simply not functioning whatsoever. I don't know how there wasn't already a test ensuring that this is working as part of their normal test suite. This is something that probably should be added going forward. 
just to ensure that you don't see another aggression in this system. With that in mind, and with there not being a test for this, I kind of understand how an issue like this sort of slithers its way into a release. Because how many people during early testing are running unattended upgrades? Most people, if you're using the Ubuntu beta, are going to be doing apt update, apt upgrade to get the patches when they want to get the patches and are probably going to be running that on a fairly frequent basis. So having it so your system is automatically doing so doesn't really make any sense. That's more of a system for a wide deployment of systems or systems that you just don't really care about where you just want to make sure they're always up to date. I get how a problem like this sneaks into a release because users who are using unattended upgrades aren't going to know it's a problem until there's at least one further update from where they are. So naturally, this is going to take a little bit of time to get there. All things considered, I am genuinely surprised by how few issues are being identified when it comes to utils. People wanted this to be this like crazy thing. Oh my god, the project's gonna explode. Ubuntu is dead. How dare you make use of you utils? It's not the GNU core utils. Therefore, it's gonna be the worst thing ever made. And yeah, there are problems. But the majority of the functionality is there. The majority of the tests are being passed. And most of the issues now are relatively small things and by the time they're being discovered by the wider community in many cases like this one they were already fixed this was an issue that ubuntu just didn't have the patch for yet because there wasn't a new tagged release that had the patch i really do need to get the uu tools maintainer on the podcast i was planning something like a year or so ago and schedules just didn't happen and it needs to happen because I think the effect that Ubuntu is going to have on the project is going to be massive. Now, do I think UUtils is going to replace the GNU core utils on every single distro? Probably not, and if it does, not anytime soon. But I think having a release like this, where a lot of people get to pressure test the project, is really going to help it improve and really help iron out those issues where mostly it works, but there are some edge cases that people didn't test yet. But what do you think? And do you have experience using UUtils? Have you run into any issues that maybe haven't really been talked about yet? Have you noticed any problems using Ubuntu 25.10? Because from what I've seen, I haven't seen anyone actually complaining about it. Yes, there's been issues like the one we talked about today and one we've talked about before the release, but overall... Nobody seems to even care. And that's not a bad thing. For something like the core utils, you shouldn't care about them. They should just work, do their thing, and basically just not get in your way. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you liked the video, go like the video, go subscribe as well. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Stelly Bearer Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'm going to show you my rusticles.